Uh, two years. Actually, two, two years. We came in June 20, 2013. And uh, we're still here. You know, we, we will continue to develop it. You know, uh, we do, uh, we make jewelry. My wife teaches jewelry making. Uh, she makes all the dolls. She's written a book right there on the table uh, about dolls and gives you instructions how to make them. People come here, sit with her and learn how to make earrings and necklaces. And you don't have to bring anything. We have all the supplies to teach you to make stuff. So it's a hands-on experience in this place. In a way, that's how our ancestors did it. They make things by hand. That's why God gave us hands. <laughs> and brain, you know, and creativity. So I believe that if once you're gifted, you have you have talent, you must share that talent. Make sure you give it to those who can carry on. My doors are open, wide open. It's always been open. You know, uh, since I've been here, we have trained many, many other people's children who have gone on to do. And all the kids, all of those kids who participated in our program, majority of them have moved on. Some of them have master's degree now. Some are in, a, you know, a doctorate programs, and they still come back to say thank you for showing me. That's why. And those who did not participate, who took the matter for granted, fell by the wayside. I see, I see them. I see some in the street. You know, I see some who are doing very, very, very well. And that's my pay. I feel good about it. And we're, my door is open. I'm willing for, you know, more people to send their children so we can teach them, so they don't grow up ignorant. They don't grow up saying, I really don't know who I am. No, you are somebody. <laughs> You're somebody. You came from kings and queens. You know, we, we had all the kingdoms, you know, before these Europeans, you know, who dominated us. As, you know, it's like they took our strength, our, our power away. And we still, we still have it because we still have Africa, you know, and all the natural resources are still there. No matter how much they took, they can't take it all. You know, it's, it's still a growing place. In its natural form, it's still there. So we still have room to go back home and be, be Africa. I, I, I don't tell, anybody to denounce, you know, being an African-American. You must be African-American because blood, sweat, and tears, you know, it paid your dues to be African-American. But you're African. That's the one that is missing. That word is African. It's crucial. You know, those People I know who have gone to Africa, who came back here, who, they, everybody is trying to do the best they can to bring our the knowledge and the wisdom of our ancestors back into the game. Uh, I know many people who are doing that. They're working very, very, very hard at it. Some are very successful. I think uh, Dr. Karenga uh, put together the seven principles of Kwanzaa. You know, those principles, if we practice them, then we will have unity amongst ourselves. You know, we will do things collectively, we will be, we will be determined as a people together to, you know, to, to make things happen for us by our, with our own hands. 
You see? We don't have to depend on anybody to show us how to be. Because we already are. another storybook I call Moonlight Stories. I've sold out of that one. Probably have a couple of copies left. I got to bring to my game. Um, I'm actually a folklorist. I tell African folk stories. I teach African language. I teach drumming, dancing, any kind of art, crafts. In here, we make majority of what we sell. We make clothes, we make t-shirts, all the paintings that you see in here. That's my work. I spend uh, time painting. My wife paints, I paint. Um, all of these are original artwork that you're looking at. Here. Oh Lord, I have been in this area more than 20 years. My son, that little guy, that guy you see there, was born here. He was 25 now. I have other kids, 30 years old, 30 to something years. So I've been around here a long, long time. I'm from Nigeria. Uh, and I've lived here since, I came since 1969. Um, I came as a musician. I was playing bass guitar in a band, a guy called Fela Kuti. I was his bass player. That's how I got to the United States. <laughs> and I stayed, I wanted to go to school. I went to school. Uh, today I'm teaching at Cal State University, Los Angeles. I'm teaching language and culture. Uh, this shop here is, is really an extension you know, of what we do in my family. You know, so people can come and experience the culture here and uh, learn. In this shop, I teach Yoruba language, Igbo language from Nigeria. I do cultural lessons, I do drumming, we have a, I have a drum class on Tuesday, I have drum circle on Fridays, um, my, the language classes are on, on Saturday, Saturday mornings, you come in here, you can get in the class and learn an African language. Because the language is language is the culture. Because the language teaches you all you need to know about your culture. It's all embedded in the language. All the traditions that we as African people, our, our ancestors, you know, uh, left for us. Uh, that we either have forgotten about it or they were taken away by force by those who deprived us of, who tried to deprive us of who we are. They say, you, gotta, you must be who the other guys say you ought to be. No, in this place we teach that you must be who God made you to be. And who your ancestors are, because you come from, you have a root. <laughs> we all have roots, and if they yank you off your root and throw you to the side, and you don't get up and 
find your way back to your roots, then you remain outside of your roots. And you lose the things that you, that are actually yours, naturally yours. All the gifts that God gave you. The language, the traditions, the culture, all the institutions that our ancestors built. You know, there, there's a way a young person talks to an adult, there's a way adults conduct themselves. All of those things are found in our tradition, how, we, how we're supposed to act. And we have all those things have been taken away, and now we act like it's all about me. <laughs> and that's not, part, that's not part of our heritage. It's not all about me, it's about us, all of us. That's the way I was brought up. So that's what I'm trying to share here that, uh, you know, if uh, together we stand divided, we fall. We're not going to make it. And if you look at other cultures, they're successful because they stick together, they work together, they help one another, they teach one another. All of those things that their ancestors brought into the world. So what, that's why it looks like they're thriving and we're not. So we need to get back those things that were taken away from us in order for us I tell my students, this system right here is not designed to protect us. This system is designed to oppress us. See? So when the person who is oppressing you is not going to allow you, is not going to hear your cry because their job is to keep you down. <laughs> no matter how hard you cry, they're winning. So what do we do? I, I teach my kids to you go back to the ways of your ancestors. All of the knowledge and wisdom of our ancestors that we left behind. That's what is missing amongst us. That's what's going to hold us, keep us together. It's like blue. That's what other people do. That's what we don't do. That's what we must go back to do it. And you start with the little children, you start teaching them their heritage, who their true ancestors are, who they were. You know, many lives have been lost. People gave their lives so that we can regain our roots and, and be who we were supposed to, who, who, who we were created to be. And we cannot allow those people who gave their lives for this cause to be in vain, we must go back to figuring out the ways of our ancestors, the wisdom.